Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about 20 ways to save $20,000. Yep, you heard it right, $20,000. It's actually 35 ways, but 20 sounds better. 15 extra bonuses. So follow some of these tips to help you save $20,000 extra dollars in the next year or two to pay off some credit cards, to pay down any other debt, to save an emergency fund, to buy something, pay for a vacation, $20,000. So welcome to the channel. My name is Trajan. I'm a chief financial officer. I used to be a Wall Street analyst. Also used to be a financial planner. So I've got some background in finance and I wanna help you be a better investor and saver and reach financial independence as soon as possible. And one of the ways to get there is to cut your expenses. The other way is increase your income, which we'll talk about in another video. But here are the ways to, to increase the money that you retain that you have for savings, savings and investing by reducing how much you spend. The first step is to create a budget. Most people don't know where their money goes. It just comes in and goes out and they're looking forward to the next paycheck. The first step is knowing where your money is going. Use an app like mint.com where you can connect it to your bank account and it will show you where your money is going. It'll categorize it so you know exactly how much you're spending on groceries or eating out or on shopping. That will help you get a handle on things. I, in my past, when I didn't have enough, a lot of money, I would not want to look at my bank account at all. And I know a lot of you are like this. You just are in denial. Don't want to look at it because there isn't as much as you want but it's important to face the music and manage your money so you can direct the money where you want it to go. So what I started doing is I logged into Mint every single day and I logged into my bank account every single day so I could see where my money was going. And it was stressful, especially when I didn't have a lot of money, but it really helped me know where everything was going so I could get a better handle on how much I was actually spending. The second tip is cut back on dining out. Dining out at restaurants, is expensive, especially if you add drinks, if you're going out a lot, if you're ordering ordering into your house, it really adds up and restaurant food generally is not that healthy. So cut back as much as you can, eliminate eating out in a restaurant and you will also eat healthier. Cancel subscriptions. There are so many subscriptions. There are streaming services, Hulu, HBO, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, plus Spotify and music subscriptions and, and Google and all sorts of subscriptions. Make a list, use Mint if it helps, and make a list of all the subscriptions, all of that 10 or $20 that are coming out. You might have five, 10, 15, those really add up and cut some of those out, especially the ones that you don't use. Number four, reduce transportation costs. It costs about $10,000 to own a car in the United States when you include insurance and gas and paying for, the, paying for the car, registration, oil changes. If you can reduce how much you use your car, if you live in a place where you can not have a car at all, then you can save $10,000 a year right there. Number five, negotiate your bills. A lot of service providers, especially a cable, internet, and phone companies will negoti negotiate with you if you call them up and ask for a reduced bill. Say, I'm thinking of going to your competitor can you offer me a better deal? And a lot of times they will. It's worth the five minutes plus 45 minutes waiting on hold to talk to somebody and just ask. They might say no, they might say, say yes. You never know and that will save you, save you some money. A smart shopper, smart, shop smarter. Look for deals and use coupons as much as you can. Smart shoppers use those. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not just old grandmas that use coupons. You can actually save quite a bit of money. Number seven is use cashback apps. Download these apps and they'll, they'll give you cash back on certain purchases. Two of the most popular are Iboda and Rakuten. Rakuten. Number eight, sell unwanted, unwanted items. The United States has a booming storage industry, storage unit industry, because Americans buy so much junk that they fill up their houses and then they have to go buy, get a storage unit or two. I know a couple of friends who have two storage units they are paying every month to store their junk. Get rid of that junk and get rid of the storage unit. Save money on decluttering your house and the storage unit cost. Number nine, use energy efficient appliances. So number one, check your toilets to make sure they're not running unnecessarily. That will run up your water bill. You can check the valve and make sure there's no water 
uh, leaking through through the bottom and then that forces the toilet to keep filling up. Uh, look at your appliances to make sure they're they're saving money. You can cut back on your electrical uses by usage by turning off the lights, installing automatic sensors, unplugging appliances that you're not using, like that fridge in the garage that's empty. And uh, look for ways to change appliances in your house that might be old. The older it is, the more energy it uses generally. One thing I did in my house recently is we changed a bunch of lights and put in ceiling fans. And that allowed us to run the ceiling fans all the time instead of the air conditioner. Ceiling fans use 90% less energy than air conditioners. Some of the things that use a lot of energy in your house and water are your washer and dryer, uh, the dishwasher, and also the TV. The lights actually don't use a lot of energy and also the, the HVAC, the heating and air conditioning. So make sure those are running efficiently. And use a programmable thermostat. Years ago, I used to do it like this in the winter and inverse in the summer where I would turn off the heater, I'd let it get cold and then I'd turn it back on and it'd warm it back up and then I'd turn it off and it would get cold again and I'd turn it back on and it'd warm it back up. And in my mind, I thought, well, I'm only paying for warming it back up. And I had an HVAC guy servicing my uh, heater that told me that that is the opposite. Actually, that uses more energy if you turn it off and turn it on. If you use a thermostat, and set it level, even if you're not home, if you're uh, away for the night or away for the weekend, setting it at a level uh, temperature actually reduces the energy usage. And number 12, DIY home repairs and car repairs. Uh, I'm not so handy, but the more I learn how to do things, the more e easy it is because if you learn it once, you can do it forever. Learn how to change your own oil, then you can do it forever, and that saves you that money on the, on the oil change. And also you get to pick up a new skill, which is pretty fun. Number 13, use public libraries. Public libraries have so many books. They have new releases. They also have things like, like DVDs, movies, equipment, computers you can rent out. And they also have something called the Libby app where you can get digital books just like Kindle without having to go to the library. And it's free. Number 15, buy generic brands. Buying generic brands like this black t-shirt is a generic brand. Brand I usually wear a black t-shirt or white t-shirt because it's cheaper. I don't have to think about what I'm going to wear that day. Reduces decision fatigue, which is a, a real thing. And, and if I spill ice cream on it like I did last night, I don't worry that I just spilled something on my $100 shirt or my $400 jeans, jeans or whatever people uh, spend on jeans these days. Um, also, rich people don't wear clothes with logos on them with expensive designer handbags. They don't feel the need to flex on how much they're spending on clothes because they're wealthy. They don't have to act or pretend they're wealthy buying these, these fancy things. So if you want to be one of those wealthy people, don't waste money on expensive designer clothes and brands. If you're not getting paid to wear the brand, then don't buy it. It doesn't matter. Buy generic brands. Uh, related to that is thrift stores. Macklemore taught us how cool thrift stores can be. There's a lot of good stuff at the thrift store. So if you've never been, then check it out. You might be surprised. Number 17, use credit card rewards. Two, 3% cash back. The Capital One uh, top card right now is offering 2% cash back. That's not, some of them have the fine print and it says 2% or 3% and it actually is like 2% only at grocery stores or gas stations or at our special store or whatever. That card is actual cash back. So if you're good with credit cards, then consider getting a cash back credit card. Make sure you pay it off every month. Number 18 is set savings goals. Sit down right now and decide how much you want to save next month or next year. And as you track it, it will encourage you because you'll see the savings adding up and you'll want to do more of it. My mom recently set a goal to save more money, so she cut out Amazon. Until last month, she was Amazon's one of Amazon's best customers because she ordered all the time. She deleted the Amazon app off her phone and hasn't ordered anything for six weeks, and she saved a lot of money just by doing that simple thing, getting Amazon, taking a break from Amazon, getting the app off of her phone. Number uh, 19, shop around for insurance. Once a year, review your insurance needs for your, your car, your house, your life insurance, your health insurance. Make sure you're getting the right coverage 
and also get, making sure you're getting the best price by shopping it around once a year. Number 20, buy in bulk. My store does this about once a month well, they'll, where they'll have a canned foods sale. They'll bring out all the canned foods and it's drastically reduced and we stock up on those canned foods. It's a little bit different than Costco where everything is in bulk, but they end up making more money from us because they buy, they package everything in bulk and everything seems so cheap, but you end up buying more than you need a lot of times. So be smart about what is actually saving you money when you're, when you're buying in bulk. Uh, okay, prioritize your spending. Just focus on your needs first over your wants. We live in a consumerist society and advertisements are always telling us that we need everything, but train your brain to question those marketing messages and focus on the things that you actually need and not just the things that the marketers tell you that you need. Number 22, cut your phone bill by using something like Mint Mobile, Cricket, or Google Fi that are all less than $50. And that helps you not be tempted as well to upgrade the next iPhone or the next Samsung phone. Instead of upgrading every time, get a, get a flip phone or a cheaper phone, which is actually trending the last couple of years as people are trying to save money. Uh, you might not need the, a smartphone. And if you want a smartphone, then skip a couple of times. Don't get the new one. Wait for the next new one or the three times new one. And instead of that $1,000 for an iPhone, just buy Apple stock. And in 10 years, you'll be happier that you have the Apple stock than you did buying the next iPhone that broke three months after you bought it and had a cracked screen. Uh, okay, number 25 is set up automatic savings with your bank. One of my favorites is have money automatically deposited when you get paid into your 401k, if your employer offers that, into your Roth IRA, into your brokerage account. Have that taken off the top because what happens is if you wait to do it manually, we forget, or at the end of the month, if you're thinking, I'll invest what I have left over at the end of the month, well, no surprise, there's usually not much left over at the end of the month. So say, pay yourself first, put that as a priority and have it taken out uh, by your employer and or transferred to your brokerage account the same day that you get paid. And it's automatic and you'll forget about it, but you'll check your account in a year and be happily surprised how much money you have in your, in your account. Number 26, buy store brands. I was at Walmart last night and noticed that the brand name milk and the store the store brand Walmart milk were uh, it was 30% cheaper the store brand and I cannot tell the difference maybe if you're a foodie you can but most people can't tell the difference between this the brand name and the store brand 27 apply the 24-hour rule or the seven-day rule in other words sleep on it if you see something that you want to buy sleep on it and chances are that in 24 hours or seven days if it's a big item you're not gonna really want it anymore there's a reason why when you go to the grocery store, all the high margin items are in the end caps, the end of the aisles, or at the checkout. They know that people make impulse buys, so they put it in your path deliberately, so you'll see it, make an impulse buy, and buy it. So go sh grocery shopping with a list, only get the things that are on your list to help you avoid impulse buying, and if it's a big purchase, wait 24 hours or seven days, and chances are you won't want it, or you'll just totally forget about it. 28, say no or hell yes. Don't buy things or spend money on things unless you're really excited about it, especially if it's a big ticket item like a vacation. Don't go on a vacation just because your friend invited you and you feel obligated because that's a lot of money. Buy things or spend money on things that you are excited about. 29, plan ahead related to vacations. If you plan ahead, you end up spending less money because you're, you're, you're researching it, you, you pay for it in advance, a lot of times you can get a discount if you pay for it in advance. I've done this a couple of times when I've rented rented houses. I pay six months in advance and 100% of the time, the landlord has accepted my money and given me a 10% discount just because I paid in advance. That's a good, a good advantage to having some money in the bank because you can buy in bulk, you can pay in advance, you can plan ahead, and that end, ends up saving you a lot of money. Uh, 30, ask for discounts. A few years ago, I was checking into a hotel in Boise, Idaho, and I asked if there were any discounts available. And the attendant said, well, are you in the Rotary Club? No. Are you military? No. 
are you in the Chamber of Commerce? No. She looked at me and said, I think you're a trucker, aren't you? And she winked at me. And I said, yeah, I am a trucker. That sounds good. And she gave me the trucker discount just because she wanted to help me out, just because I asked, asked, and there's no skin off her back. She just wanted to help me out. And I found that if you just ask a lot of times, you will get the, disc the discount. Uh, number 31, borrow instead of buy. If it's something you're just gonna use once, like you need a, an edge trimmer just to trim up your yard, borrow one from a neighbor instead of buying one and using it once and then deciding you don't like it and storing it in your garage forever. Number 32, cut down on, or cancel or cut back on your gym membership. Every January we go to the gym, everybody gets a new membership, gets their brand new shiny shoes and their Lululemon, and by March, the gym is empty again, but everybody is still paying for their membership. That's how gyms make their money. So cancel the membership or build a gym in your garage, go to the YMCA, go to a, a public gym. If you're not using your CrossFit membership and going several times a week and you're still paying $120, that is a waste of money. You know it and I know it. So either go and use it or do something else. Number 33, delete food ordering apps like Uber Eats. You're paying for expensive food, you're paying for service fees, you're paying for tips and taxes, and also it's a temptation when you get home from work, you don't wanna cook, you just pull out the app and order and it's easy, but that adds up. Uh, number 34, bottled water. One of my personal pet peeves, Evian spelled backwards is naive because bottled water is a total scam. You can get it free out of your tap and if you think that it tastes different, then get a water filter, a Brita filter, and put it in your fridge or attach it to your tap. Don't pay for bottled water, especially when there are better alternatives, and it is junking up the world. I live by the beach, and I can, I, I, I can see it every day, empty water bottles washing up on shore, and it just, uh, it's just so, so sad to see. So I try not to, bottle, to buy bottled water. And number 35, last one, is change your mindset from I can't afford that to it's not in my budget. It's more empowering. It helps you say no to things that you don't need. And you also don't feel poor. When you say I can't afford it, it makes you feel poor. And it's a negative. If you say it's not in my budget, then it's a reminder that you're good with your money, that you budget for, for things. And it's empowering. So there you have it, 35 ways to save $20,000 to get you on the road to financial independence as fast as possible. And remember that every dollar counts and with dedication and persistence, you can save money, you can invest that money and you can be good with your money and that money will grow the more you save and invest it. So thanks for watching. If any of these tips were help, helpful to you, then give this video a like and subscribe, and I would love to hear, what did I miss? If there's anything that you do to save money, then comment below, and we'll see you next time.